I'm Joe and welcome to my studio. Today's subject is a beautiful sunset sky with trees silhouetted against it. The colours are all quite muted other than in the sky area where we get some nice warmth. The aim of this painting is to capture the atmosphere of this early evening sky and the beautiful shapes in the palm trees and the other foliage. Design-wise, I'm not going to be changing much that's in the photo. I'll move the main palm tree a little bit because it's a little bit too centralised for my liking. And the flame in the bottom of the right-hand corner doesn't really add anything to the scene, so I'll remove that. And I'll probably put a small boat, sailboat, in the distant horizon just to add a little bit more life to the subject. Because the sky is the major component, I've got to make sure I leave plenty of room for the sky. So I'll just draw the horizon in. It's roughly, uh, you know, maybe about a third, maybe a little bit less than a third up the, um, uh, up the paper. We've got a little land mass over here, so I'll just lightly draw that in. I'm going to bring this palm tree to the right a little bit. And then these other palm trees, I'm going to move them in a little bit there and maybe there. Just drawing them as single lines. They're going to be painted very quickly with the brush. So right now I'm just interested in their position. And then here I'll paint a sailboat. Just make that a bit bigger. That will do. There's not a lot of detail in these shapes because it's all silhouette. There we go. And that's it for the drawing. Now, as far as the uh, my normal procedure, normally when I'm painting bigger than this, I would be wetting the back of the paper just to give me more time to, to paint and, and play with the shapes. In this case, because it's quite a small painting, it's only an eighth sheet, which is about 10 and a half by about seven inches. Because of that, I don't need very much time to complete my painting, so there's no need to wet the back, and the amount of cockling should be relatively limited. All right, so let's begin by mixing our colors. We've got blue in the sky. We've got some big dark clouds, and then we've got the warmth in the horizon. So let's get some cobalt blue. Now, because it's late in the day, it's not going to be a bright blue. So let's add a small amount of permanent rose to that. And just a hint of cat orange. That's good. So that will do for the the light blue component. 
and then for the warmth, some weak cat oranges, Winsor Newton cat orange, which is a yellowish orange. So if you're using another brand, just make sure it's more of a yellowish orange rather than a reddish orange. And that should work just as well. And a reference is more of a reddish orange in this case. I'll add a little bit of Scarlet Lake to that to warm it up. And that will do for that. And then for the dark sky, which is the biggest shape in the sky. Just mix some French ultramarine. Some permanent rose. Some cobalt blue. And a little bit of burnt sienna. The burnt sienna will grey off some of that blue. Good. And there's some clouds there with just a hint of warmth in them. So for that, I'm going to get some weak cad orange. And in, in that case, I won't add any of the Scarlet Lake to it. But it's very pale if you look at these colours. If you look at the sky, in these areas up here, and up some of these softer clouds, I'm just adding a little bit of warmth with the cat orange. The other thing to note is the sun is setting over here because this is the lightest part of the painting, somewhere to the right of the screen. So it's going to be more yellowish than this distant area here, which just has more red in it. So that's something else to keep in mind when painting. I'm ready to start the painting. If we look at the sky, however, you know, you've got this warm yellow colour here. And if I'm not careful, if I just start painting with the blue and then the dark clouds, I could lose that. So what I'm going to do is turn my board around like this. That way, the colours, at least initially, will just run this way and those darker, cooler colours won't flow into the warmer part of the sky. To make it easier for myself, it's a good idea to turn the photo around so that you effectively are painting what you see in the photo. It's a bit too warm. I'm going to grab some cerulean blue. Let's clean this first. That's better. And lots of water. Just a hint of pink because the cerulean is a slightly coolish blue and it can have a bit of a greenish tint to it. Then we'll go into this colour. Clouds down there.
Now I'll go in a little bit of this warmth, but make sure I don't lose all the little highlights. Good. Then we'll go in with the orange. See how I'm holding the brush? This allows me to have a lot of control with where I want to position it. I'll paint the sky colour over the sail. That way I don't end up with a line through it later. And, and at this stage I can play with it a little bit. If I want a little bit more warmth, let's add some more red over here. Now we can go in and paint the cloud. If you're more comfortable wetting the back of your paper, then go ahead and do that. I just wanted to show people that you don't always have to wet the back. Again, I want to make sure I don't lose this lovely warmth, the bottom here. Grab some of this weaker mix with some of this stronger mix. I'm going to just put in hints of these other little clouds up here. This area has already dried quite a bit, so I really can't play, play there too much. And I don't really need to because there's going to be a, a lot of foliage in that area. Now I'll go in and just adjust some of these edges. I don't really want straight edges up here in the sky. And then we've got some, within this dark area, even darker paint. So what I'll do, just make some room in my palette, pick up some of this paint, move it over here, and then add more paint to it. But no more water. So this immediately tells me I'm going to get a stronger tone. I'm just looking at the basic pattern of the light and dark shapes in the sky. I don't have to stay with it. If you know if you want to change some part, 
go right ahead, it's a sky. They're always changing. Now, if it does start to dry on you, just while it's still got a shine on it, get your spray bottle and give it a light spray. And I'm spraying this way, not that way. This way, so that the big droplets will land off the paper and only the lightest ones will land on the surface of my paper. And that'll give me a lot more time to paint. That'll do. Now, clean my brush, any area I want to lighten, just to retrieve a bit of a highlight or to soften an edge. I can do that now with just a damp brush. I've squeezed all the water out, or most of the water. Can't do too much of this or you'll disturb the paint. So you've got to do it while it's still uh, reasonably wet. So that when you lift, the paint will flow back in and, and recreate some nice edges. I think that will do it. So let's turn this around now. Okay, now I need to let that dry. So I'll speed things up with the hairdryer and then we can do the water. Now, if we have a look at the water, you can see how, while it is blue, it's what I call a steely blue. It's reflecting a lot of the sky color into it and it's not a bright blue. So we'll mix that primarily with French ultramarine and burnt sienna, maybe a touch of cobalt turquoise, maybe even a little bit of permanent rose. So let's do that now. I've already got these colors, so here, it's mostly French ultramarine, a little bit of burnt sienna, there's a little bit of permanent rose as well. So I'll just add some cobalt turquoise to it. That just gives it a hint of green. The other thing to note is how much darker the water is relative to the sky. So tonally, it's got to be quite a bit stronger. So if we look at our paint mix here, when I test it, it's really not very much stronger than some of these sky colours. Though it's not particularly darker than this area here, but it still is a little bit darker. So what I'll do is start with this, but then I'll add more paint to it. That's pretty good. Let's go ahead and paint that. 
Oh, I would like it a little bit darker still, so I'm going to add a bit more bead. So I just want to get the horizon line in first. And some quick brush strokes. I know that there's not a lot of white foam in the photo, but I'd like a little bit. So the quick brush strokes will leave some of that foam behind and it'll just make sure we don't end up with a very flat looking ocean. And then I'll add some more paint here. Vary the colour a bit, maybe a bit more of the turquoise. The main thing is to have thicker paint because I can use that to create some ripples and undulations in the water. These undulations get smaller as they move into the distance. Not really smaller, but just because of perspective, they look smaller. Okay, that's the water done. We'll dry that and then we can move on to the next stage. And as you can see at this stage, We've got the water in place and we've got this lovely light in the sky. So that was, you know, the sky was the main thing we wanted to capture. By adding the water, it made the sky look even brighter. And now we'll paint the palm trees and that should add even more light because of the contrast between the darker silhouetted palm trees and the sky. First, I'll paint this landmass here. And that's quite dark. We'll grab some Bernstein and French ultramarine. Maybe a bit of raw umber. Photographs don't tend to capture these darks very well. This distant hill would have had a little bit of green in it. That's why I'm, you see me adding some of the more green based colours like the aureole and a bit of cobalt turquoise. Though the main thing is just to get the tone right. This brush is a bit too big. Not quite as dark as what I'd like. So we'll go back to those colours.
And I'm leaving the odd little piece of, of untouched paper there just to, to hint at a beach or some other shape. While we're at it, let's paint this boat in the distance. I'm using my core mixture here that I used for the water and adding a little bit of burnt sienna to it will just darken that. It's a bit too weak. Just hinting at a reflection, you really wouldn't see it, but for design purposes, I like to still add a bit of a hint of a reflection there. Okay, now let's mix the colours for the palm trees and the other foliage. The main thing with them is, is their tone. They're very dark relative to the rest of the paintings. So let's mix some colours. The core colour will be lots of French ultramarine and burnt sienna. I'll add a little bit of the turquoise and oriolan in the foliage area, but not very much. I really want this to be just a dark silhouette. Now this looks very dark, but if we check it on paper, you see it's really nowhere near dark enough yet. So it just means I have to add a lot more paint. This is one time when fresh paint would be a bit of a help. That's pretty good. And I'm going to mix another puddle, smaller this time, for the foliage. Grab some of that. Add a little bit of cobalt turquoise, tiny bit of oriolan. This is just to give it a hint of green, but really it's still going to be a very dark colour. It would look silly if it was too bright because it wouldn't be in that silhouette state. That's good. I've mixed too much of this dark. It's 
So I do want it a bit stronger in tone. Great. Okay. Now, palm trees, if we look at the edge of the trunk, it's really um, quite rough, right? So the way we demonstrate that with watercolour is with a dry brush stroke. If you just pick up a brush that's loaded like this and, and draw a mark like that, you're just going to get sharp edges, right? So what you need to do is take some of the paint out and then test it. And then when you sort of see, there you go, that type of mark, so let me make more space. So when you see that type of mark happening, you know that your brush is ready to be able to create some of this broken edge. A bit bigger. That'll do. So I wanted some of this broken edge effect happening. That's that one. Then we've got another one here. Just a little bit more paint. That's great. So there are our three palm trees, or well, their trunks anyway. So let's now look at the foliage. And for that I'll be using my fan brush. I'll start by taking out at half the paint. And I just look at the foliage and use the fan brush to imitate that shape. The trick is not to have too much paint in your fan brush, however. Right now I'm concentrating on this main palm tree.
and we've got this other tree there and I'll use that to connect some of these shapes to the base of the painting. We'll throw some grasses here. Now I'll get my rigger, painting some smaller branches. And I'll define some of these shapes up here a bit more. I think these trunks need to be a bit darker in tone. Going in with this darker paint now just gives an extra little dimension to the original foliage. It's important to get these trees dark enough that you get that strong contrast between the light sky and the tree trunks. Throw some birds in the sky.
They're just little shapes that help direct the eye into this sort of central area. And I think that will do it, folks. So just sign it. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and hit the subscribe and notification button if you haven't already done so. It helps the channel out quite a bit when you do that. And please consider supporting me on Patreon if you are able to do so. I look forward to seeing you for the next one.